Hey, just a couple things program-wise before we get to this week's games. Just continue to be very appreciative and thankful for the attendance, our season ticket holders coming out in full force, our student body. Um, we're one of just a handful of teams around the country in college basketball that are on a streak of uh, sold out games. We sold out our first two here in Lubbock and then sold out our third game in Midland uh, the other day. So I just want to try to keep that uh, streak going. Uh, the message for season ticket holders has always been thank you um, for your contribution, for your support of Tech Basketball. And on the nights where you can't come to the games, which we certainly understand, if you could just go that extra effort and, and um, time and make sure you hand your tickets to someone and ask them to fill your seats. Uh, tickets are being scanned right now at an all-time high percentage-wise, uh, so we just want to continue that. In return, season ticket holders, if you have your tickets scanned on a consistent basis, then there'll be um, you know, things for you throughout the year. I think uh, Sunday is the first time where we give you a, um, a gift for being at the games as season ticket holders. Students, uh, so appreciative of our first two sellouts here in Lubbock. Want to continue to encourage you to come to the games, come early. Obviously, we have a huge opportunity game in January when Kentucky comes to Lubbock, arguably one of the biggest games in program history in terms of non-conference opponents. We have nothing but respect for Kentucky. We look forward to the opportunity to play this game. Uh, with over 35,000 students at the school, how can you get to that game? We've asked you to come to all five games, four games, first semester, and one game when the students return from the Christmas break. If you go five for five, you're guaranteed a ticket at the Kentucky game. Many, many, many students are on track. Thursday at seven is game number three. For those students that aren't gonna make quite the five for five, there is still real value in trying to come to as many games you come that you can. The students that come to four games out of the five will have priority when it comes to the remaining seats left uh, for the Kentucky game. So above all, thank you to our students. Those of you that wanna come see the team play um, that aren't season ticket holders and aren't students, there are, are tickets still available, even for Thursday night's game. So we encourage you to call the ticket office or texastech.com. Uh, but again, very appreciative of our attendance and very appreciative of everybody that's, that's worked towards this. Questions for Chris? Carlos. Uh, Chris, I just, just from your perspective, I guess what's uh, kind of made you such a good passer? I guess can you kind of look towards anything that you kind of did early on that kind of helped you kind of get cord vision or just the way you pass? Uh, I would have to just go back to my early coaching, um, all my training, all my years and experience of playing basketball. Really good at seeing things and uh, picturing what can come next. So I guess for you, when did you kind of know that you kind of had something like that? Because obviously it, it takes a little bit of time to kind of figure that out. Uh, I guess when, when did you kind of have that kind of light bulb click moment as to when you kind of knew that you could see stuff happen before it happened? Uh, I'll say middle school. So I guess for you, uh, what's your favorite part of playing basketball in terms of if it's not getting the assist to a player, I guess what, what else is kind of fun for you? Uh, just the team camaraderie, just seeing, you know, other players uh, strive and just that brotherhood. What's kind of made this team so successful in terms of when they do get an assist that they have been able to score? Uh, I'll go back to what I just said. Um, we, you know, we have a real good connection um, team-wise, I think. And um, that's why I feel like um, we move the ball so well, trying to get all of us involved. Chris, uh, coach always talks about this is work in progress in every game. What's the next step for this team? What's something that you think y'all can improve on, uh, specifically Thursday night? Uh, just lowering our turnover numbers. Um, I think they're, they're pretty high right now. Um, as a team, I feel like if we lower the, the turnover numbers, our assists will go up. I feel like, obviously, then our offense would be even much better. You talk about the freshmen. I know you're, you're new here, but just kind of being young, and they've had an impact so far. They just kind of had that impact, the freshmen. Uh, you're new here, but obviously they're new here as well. What have you kind of just seen from them? Um, very mature, um, just absorbing everything, um, taking coaching at an uh, all-time high level, I think, that I've seen freshmen. Um, I'll say very mature. The crowds have been sold out. Uh, just give me your thoughts. And, you know, we hear from Coach how important it is. How important is it for the players to have this place packed? And uh, what's that do for you guys? Uh, just makes it more, you know, 
more fun it doesn't make sense but it makes it uh better to play in um a, a larger crowd it's just the atmosphere makes it harder for the opponent and it just makes us you know want to play much harder keep that attendance going chris maybe like a month ago you said sometimes the team looks really good some in practice sometimes not so much from that point till now have you guys taken a step in maybe one area of y'all's game that you've you've seen um I'll say yes. Uh, with our turnover numbers um, in practice, we, we charge heavily um, thanks to our head coach, and um, they've gone down a lot. Any other questions for Chris? Coach, what have you seen uh, just from looking at tape on Tennessee State? Yeah, Tennessee State is um, the most athletic team we've played to this point. They uh, they look like a Big 12 team in terms of their length and athleticism. Um, you know, they've got one guy that used to play in our league. They've got junior college All-American transfers. They have Division One transfers, and they've recruited well. But I think the first thing that kind of stood out to me is just the overall talent, length, and athleticism on this roster. Um, they've got a good basketball team, too. They seem to play well together. They'll come in here with four wins. They've already won on the road. Um, basically, have five guys in their starting lineup that are averaging in double figures or close to it. Uh, so they have the balance that all good teams look for. Um, they have the ability to play different ways because they have good inside players and good perimeter players. So it's another team that has our full attention, our full respect. I think this team will compete for a spot in the NCAA tournament this year by winning their conference. How much of bringing down turnovers is uh, having high basketball IQ players, and how much of it is continuity and guys knowing where they're going to be because they've played with each other? What does continuity mean? Continuity is like knowing how Chris Clark, knowing how TJ Holyfield's going to be here and Nadolny's going to be here because yeah. I've played with them and I just know their game. Well, I think all those things come into taking care of the ball. I think teams that value the ball, there is a uh, a relationship between the experience and how long you've played together. I think we certainly saw that in, in past teams. Um, you know, when Matt first started playing with Jarrett, it took some time for it to gel. By the end of the year, those guys were on the same page. So I would agree with you in that. Um, the more we can play together, the more we can practice together, the better chemistry we have. Um, hopefully that translates into taking care of the ball better. Yet to be yet to be seen. Um, a lot of it is, you know, in basketball, victory favors the more aggressive team. Period. It's not it's not a debate. But sometimes being aggressive, you have to know when to pick and choose your times. You know, sometimes that plays there. Sometimes that play might be there, but it's not worth trying. So I think with our young players, especially. Um, it's not like these guys are trying to turn the ball over. I think it's just finding that balance between being aggressive, but also understanding how much you have to value the ball to each possession to play at this level. With a bit of a longer layoff between games, is it beneficial to have more practice time between games or with this team still kind of gelling? Would you prefer to get that in game experience? Yeah, me personally, I would much rather have the practices this early in the season. Um, and in our journey, you know, later on in the year, there's something to be said for momentum. You're playing well. Man, this, this bye doesn't come at a very good time. I wish we could keep playing. But right now, it's so early. I think every coach and every player in the country would, would agree that, you know, it's nice to have a couple of days of practice. Um, a lot of the practices are always preparation for your next game. But when you have an extended time like we have in the last week, we were able to practice a couple of days just on us not necessarily on our next opponent, but just on us. Um, so that, that was good. From the foreign tour to now, the first three games into the season, what have you seen that you, that you have, this team has developed and has been stronger at and will get stronger as the season progresses? I think just consistency. Even way back in the summer in the Bahamas, we showed the ability to play some good basketball. We had some high level moments, high level possessions, high level four minute games. In our three games in the Bahamas, we just weren't able to put it together consistently. Um, we're not quite there yet. You know, we're striving for 40 minutes. That's what it'll take when we get to the Big 12 play. But I think consistency continues to be our kind of our theme 
Um, you know, I don't sit around at night wishing we could do this or hoping we can do that. I know we can. Um, but where I, where I am at night is, is uh, trying to figure out where we can be consistent and where we can put possessions back to back. And what one thing of this team other than turnovers is the thing that keeps you up at night? Well, I mean, a lot of things keep me up at night. Uh, my three daughters, taxes, um, you know, all sorts of things keep me up at night. Um, with basketball, it's just, uh, you know, there's an urgency around here. I think you guys understand that, that we're not trying to be good in 2022. You know, we're, we're trying to be good for Chris and TJ Holyfield, these seniors, and the time is now. And um, with that just becomes the urgency, man. Did we get everything we possibly could get done today? Um, so that's that's where my mind is late at night. Coach, I know you kind of alluded to him, but Wesley Harris uh, for Tennessee State, and the guy you were talking about from West Virginia, I guess what, what does he kind of bring to their team and what, what's something that you have to kind of do to slow them down considering they have that kind of up-tempo pace? Yeah, Harris is a talented player. Um, always had a lot of respect for his game uh, when he played in the league. Um, definitely has length and athleticism, makes plays on both ends of the court, and you know, he's a dangerous player. Um, I, I've only watched their – um, what, five games to this point. And um, so I'm not in their locker room every day, but it looks like he's brought them um, some leadership and some swagger and some confidence. Uh, he's filling up the stat sheet like he always has as a college player. So he's a player that we have a lot of respect for. I know you kind of have mentioned Chris's passing as a lead. I guess who are some other guys that he kind of reminds you of in terms of what he's been able to see on the court and what allows him to kind of just find a guy that's either open or for, for an easy for an easy bucket. Yeah, I mean, two common things I think with passers, you have to have an unselfishness to you. Um, some guys come down the court looking for a bucket, and some guys come down the court looking to make a play, and that's Chris. He has more than enough ability to score the ball. I've already um, projected that for you guys. It'll be sooner than later when we're sitting up here and he's had a 20-point game. Right now, I just think he's doing a great job taking what the defense gives him. Um, so that that value of passing and that way to look at the game is always where it starts. And then, you know, anticipation is a, is a big part. Chris said it himself. He can see things before they happen. Um, and on this year's team, you know, it's not just Chris. Morrow has always been a guy that can pass the ball. Kyler Edwards has worked really hard in studying the game and developing this. Um, and some of our young guys, you know, see things. So, um, you know, this team's a good passing team. We're at an all-time high right now with our assist. I'm um, pleased with that for so many reasons, but probably the main one is that we're playing good team basketball right now. We're playing unselfish ball. The ball's not sticking. Guys are moving the ball, and this translates to better basketball. I know you talked about him winning possessions. I guess what are some ways that you can kind of explain how he's won possessions minus the assist to kind of show that he has kind of provided value for you all so far, especially as a grad transfer? Yeah, I think the stat sheet says it best. I mean, he's one of the best players in college basketball. He has a three-year body of work in the ACC. It's not like he just showed up here and he's dropping dimes. I mean, he's been doing this for a long, long time. Um, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a big-time player because he can score on all three levels. Um, he can pass the ball. And on the other end, he can defend multiple positions. So um, I think Chris's value is it's easy to see, um, but it's the intangibles that – we're most proud of. You know, he's really buying in. Um, and he's playing Texas Tech basketball this early season. Last one for me. Uh, Mac, I guess just if you could just kind of talk about his development and the way that he's kind of improved his confidence, especially after a, a couple maybe shaky possessions where maybe he had a turnover. Now it seems like he's got some more confidence passing the ball. Yeah, those questions would have to be asked to Mac about his personal confidence. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer in you create your own confidence with how you work. Um, and, and, and the, the time you put in every day. Um, the biggest thing with Mac, in my opinion, is he's just starting to get healthy. Um, you know, it's been a real challenge. He's had some real adversity, multiple injuries. He's been in Lubbock since last Christmas, but has really never been able to consistently practice until recently. And I think just with the few practices he's had with consistency, you can already tell the difference between day one and day uh, four in terms of game. So, um, to me, with Mac, it's never been about basketball. It's been about him getting healthy and then staying the course while he's going through the adversity 
Um, in terms of his ball handling, I mean, I think he'd be the first to tell you he's got to take care of the ball. He's had some just uncharacteristic uh, turnovers, but you know, I remain confident as long as he continues to put in the time um, that, that these plays will soon be of the past and he'll be out there doing the things that he can do with his talent. Talk to me about your perimeter defense. Where do you think you are as far as stopping dribble penetration into the paint? Is this uh, uh, early on? Is it uh, where, where do you think you are on the, on the curve? It's got to get better. Uh, you know, defense always starts with ball pressure. Uh, defense always starts with a guy guarding the ball. You know, there's five Texas Tech defenders out there. The guy guarding the ball has the toughest job. That's his go time. He's got to get it done. Then the other four play off of that. Um, again, I get back to our consistency thing. We've had some high-level possessions guarding the ball. And then we've had some, just some breakdowns where it looks like guys are getting straight line drives to the basket. So we're working on it. Um, we're spending practice time every day on guarding the ball. And, um, I, I think our guys understand how important it is. I don't know if they're ready to make the, make the turn where it looks a lot better, but they are working on it hard. They understand the helping the helper situation in that regard as well, right? Yeah, it's a big part of our defense. You know, like offensive basketball players are so good these days, you really can't guard anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so it's just a matter of when the help's coming. So, um, you know, first guy's got to go help the ball, and then the next guy's got to help the helper. And um, right now we will have possessions where four guys are doing it about as well as it can be done. Then one mistake, you know, in team basketball can um, – it can – you know, make you weak quickly. It can expose your weakness. So we're just a work in progress. We're no different than our team was this time last year or even two years ago. Um, but there is some urgency. This schedule is about to pipe up pretty quick, beginning Thursday night. This is a really good team coming in here Thursday night. They have Big 12 athleticism. They have Big 12 length. They have a coaching staff that I have a lot of respect for. So um, we're going to have to get some of these things, you know, figured out pretty quick. As long and as athletic as you tend to be, will we see – a little more half-court pressure, running jump traps, full court. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we're prepared to play different ways this year. Um, we like our just talent defensively. Kind of a fine line. You know, I'd much rather be really, really good at one thing than just average at six things. But at this level, there needs to be some diversity to your offense and your defense to give yourself a chance on, on different nights. And so, um, yeah, I don't think it's letting the secret out that we're prepared to play different ways this year if need be. We've already played a couple different ways in this early season defensively. And I think it's fair to say that that could continue.